Next on Broadway Profiles, we'll talk to the amazing Peter Gallagher about his surprising return to Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist and his Tony-nominated daughter. Plus, Tony Award winner Lena Hall is here to talk about season two of the hit show Snowpiercer. And we're waiting for the return of West Side Story. We'll talk to one of the revival's young stars about how she's powering through the pandemic. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is Broadway Profiles, presented by Broadway.com. Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm your host, Tamsin Fidel. Well, we can't wait for the return of live musical theater, that's for sure. But there are plenty of awesome ways to get your fix right now on television. I am the X-Men meets The Voice. I'm sorry, what? Shows like Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, the second season, now underway on NBC. If you somehow haven't seen it yet, it's a musical dramedy about a software designer who discovers she can hear people's innermost thoughts through song. It's so nice to have you back. Oh, okay, let's everybody just calm down. It's a really cool concept with some really amazing talent, including Tony Award nominee and TV and movie star Peter Gallagher. Broadway.com's editor-in-chief Paul Wontorek is here with more. Hi, Paul. Thanks, Tamsin. A lot of fans might actually be surprised to see Peter Gallagher showing back up in season two. His character, Zoe's father, passed away in the season one finale, but he's living on in Zoe's heart and mind this season. Psst. Over here. I want to talk to you for a minute. I'm right here, kid. We had the chance to chat about the show, his love of Broadway, and his Tony-nominated daughter, rising Broadway star Katherine Gallagher. I found your work on, uh, continue to find your work on Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist very beautiful too. I, I lost uh, my godmother to ALS to see that just the character uh, not be able to speak. And, and you're still in season two. And obviously there's amazing Broadway talents uh, involved in that. And yes. it's sort of like a, a fantastic modern day musical. It's good to have as many Broadway vets in the cast as we have. Only, only somebody who's done a, a musical for a long run really understands what it's, how much right. it hurts. <laughs> Raise your glasses, people, to the newlyweds, Grace and Nick. Surprise. Is Nick gonna be back on uh, Grace and Frankie? Oh I yeah, love. oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, I can't wait. I mean, we're, I was just talking to Jane the other day. We're, we're hopefully coming back in June to finish up the seventh. They're gonna, it's gonna be end the end of the seventh season. I've shot a couple already for the seventh season and I have a couple okay. more to do. They, they haven't killed Nick yet. You have a very talented daughter. Tony nominee. Catherine Gallagher, how about that? That's exciting. I'm so happy for her. That was such a big day. And she, I think she uh, eclipsed you in terms of the, her age when she got her Tony nomination, right? Oh, I'm, she's eclipsed me in every single way. <laughs> All I know is that when Catherine was three or four, yeah, she saw Annie. She would dress as Annie every day of the week. She would insist on going to school in the dead of winter with her little Mary Janes and her little ankle socks and her red dress. And so for quite a while, she was Annie. And she did a bunch of other shows. And then a few years out in high school, she did, uh, with Ben Platt, she did City of Angels. Well, she's like a bombshell. And then she went off to become, you know, to, to she started playing rock and roll clubs when she was 15 and writing songs yeah. and selling songs. And Ooh, ask if I like you do. But yes, I couldn't be more, I couldn't be happier for her. This is such a broad question, but what is special about Broadway to you? Well, there's just nothing like live. When things work in theater, for a moment, nobody, even us, nobody feels alone. For a moment, we are all members of the same family. But I'm also very interested in what's next and what's new. You know, I'm very excited for the shows that Catherine will get to do and, and, yeah. uh, and I'll get to watch. Well, Snowpiercer season two is now out on TNT. It's a gripping post-apocalyptic thriller set aboard a speeding train in a frozen wasteland. And it features a ton of A-list talent, including Tony Award winners David Diggs and Lena Hall. We had a chance to talk to Lena about what to expect in season two. Recommend a new tribunal. Or what? Don't make me threaten you, Melanie. Third touches every system on this train. We will be heard. 
we were about two weeks till, till we were finished filming season two. So it was like when the whole shutdown happened, it happened and we were so close to the finish line of finishing season two. We, no one knew what was gonna happen next. We didn't know if we were gonna go back ever. Like, no, the whole world didn't know what was going on. When they asked us to go back months later, six months later to finish filming season two, uh, my biggest scared thing was that A, I would look completely different <laughs> and B, I had gained weight from sitting at home from COVID. And I know a lot of people who gained weight from just, cause we didn't know what was going on. So everyone just kind of took a pause. Season two of Snowpiercer is going to be much uh, darker and, f and there's gonna be a good amount of humor in it, uh, which I really love. Uh, the dark humor of it, we're kind of amping up that odd strangeness that season one had, but um, this one will have a little more of that. And you can expect um, a lot of fabulous looks from Miss Audrey. Who knows where they come from, but uh, <laughs> Miss Audrey, her looks are 100% bigger, better, bolder, more wild, and I love that. The gritty new revival of West Side Story celebrated its opening night on Broadway one year ago. Three weeks later, COVID shut everything down. But that show will be back along with its amazing young cast. Broadway.com correspondent Charlie Cooper spoke with one of the rising stars of West Side Story. Thanks, Tamsin. Last February, Shereen Pimentel took her opening night bow as leading Lady Maria in the innovative West Side Story revival, just weeks before the Broadway shutdown. I caught up with Shereen to talk about what she's learned in the past year and what excites her moving forward. I'm curious how it felt for you having this huge breakout role as Maria. What was that feeling like for you to know, like you've stepped into this role that like you are confidently just killing and out of nowhere, it's kind of ripped away from you. Yeah, um, at first it was really sad, um, but I think we were going through so much. Like we, we were experiencing like learning what COVID was as much as we can learn and, and learning how it was gonna affect our lives on, on the scale that it affects us now. Um, and then at the same time, learning all the different things that we were gonna miss out on now because we were, you know, we're trying to be safe at the same time. So it was it was a huge um, hit, I wanna say. And it was, it was hard to take in at first. Now I'm really excited. Um, because I feel like we almost get another go at it, which I don't think we need. I think we were great. I, I loved what we were doing, but like we're gonna come at it as different people and through a different experience of like everything that's happened and now going into doing the show. Um, so I kind of like the like take two. West Side Story had opened and then everything had changed for us. So kind of talk to us about um, it's the anniversary or close to the anniversary and what's that like for you guys. I think it's gonna be so much emotion um, that comes up for February 20th. I think I'm probably gonna spend it at home, just okay. really relaxed um, to like kind of ride that wave of what it's gonna be. But I'm so excited to see the full year. Like we as a cast have changed. It's one of the biggest things I think I've told everyone is like, I'm so excited to come back to see what the change is gonna be of the cast. When we come together and we work on this piece again, because we can't be who we were a year ago. How do you stay connected with your cast family? And do you guys have any rituals that you guys kind of maintain while you're away from each other? Um, we don't have any rituals. We kind of just check in every so often. We were together a lot before the shutdown. We just got through tech, just got through previews. We saw each other probably more than we saw anyone else in our lives. So we did like scatter to the wind for a second and like take our own space. And then now we've been able to like check in with each other. If someone books something really fun, we've been able to talk about that. If there are ever like things that remind us of like the process that we were going through at the time. Yeah, I, I really, really miss my cast though. They're extremely talented obviously but like they're just such great people and and such great people to be with and and spend time with and so i really can't wait until we can come back together be in the same city do the same thing again um that's just gonna be so exciting we first got to know cheyenne jackson for his work on broadway but more recently we've seen him on tv an american horror story the reboot of saved by the bell and now the brand new sitcom call me cat we had a chance to talk 
I said I like it because it's about a, uh, a single woman who is uh, kind of struggles and is dealing with it all. And I think that all of us have been there at one point or another in that singledom lifestyle, trying to figure it all out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. I loved the idea that the lead woman is happy, but doesn't have it all, whatever that means, right? So she's, uh, she's struggling and she's relatable and she's hysterical and she's a little lonely, but she's a little happy. I, I just, it's a really wonderfully fully drawn character. So I just thought who is gonna do this like like Miranda and and I just, and then when they said it was Mayim Bialik, I thought that is so inspired. Catherine, I found your soulmate. I'm not gonna go on a date with a random man you met at the horse track. He's not a random man, he's the track announcer. And I'm going on a date with a track announcer because I said yes to my mother, yes to my mother, and taking the lead is hell must have frozen over. She's incredible in this. All, she's got all the stuff and all of the, all of the, the, obviously the comedy and the pratfalls and the silliness, but she, she's truly, uh, it, it's remarkable. I love your enthusiasm with that. Does that make you perform differently uh, when you're opposite somebody that, you know, you feel like really, it really just gets it. It really, you know, it all comes together. For sure. You, it's like a tennis match. That's, you know, it's the biggest analogy of acting, but you have to be, you want to be with somebody better than you to make you better. But it's it's not just her, like this cast is so stacked. Swoozy Kurtz, you know, is a legend, two-time Tony winning. I'm actually reading her autobiography as I'm shooting scenes with her right now. So I feel very like cosmically connected with her. And then Leslie Jordan, who I've known for nine years, and we've done American Horror Story and, and we're just friends outside of work. It's Brandon. He sent me a picture of himself. Woo, I'd hit that. That's just something I've heard people say. I wish I hadn't tried it. Watching the world fall in love with him and 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 get his magic when all of us who know him get to get get that on a personal daily basis, it's so satisfying. And he's so beautiful in this show. I love the fact you appreciate uh, people around you too, and you 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 compliment each other versus compete with each other. And I think that's oh. a lesson you learn over time, obviously, but when you get it, you get it. And it really, it, it makes you a different performer, person, human being, you know? Well, I mean, wouldn't you say, I, it wouldn't, I'm sure you'd agree, like at this point in life, why even leave the house or go to work if you're gonna be with, with yeah. Yo, mama. Sorry, Dr. Mama. How do you think this year's gonna go for these new students? I'm psyched. Saved by the bell, can we talk about yeah. that? Sure. I love the fact that this has kind of transcended time it's a you know it's got that cult following from so long ago and i yeah. just feel like when you see these these things come back i find them to be even more exciting sometimes. yeah i i did grow up watching it because i'm the same age as all those guys all those yeah. guys and gals so when you go on a show that you grew up watching it's yeah bizarre it happened once when i did an episode of will and grace in the reboot and i that show was everything to me and then i walked on set and then there's karen and <laughs> will and yeah it was like Broadway has lost a legend, not an actor or director. Iconic restaurant owner Joe Allen has died. Joe Allen Restaurant opened up 46th Street back in 1965, and it became a favorite place for the theater crowd, both Broadway fans and celebrities alike. The restaurant walls are lined with the posters of famous Broadway flops, shows that basically closed as soon as they opened. Joe Allen was 87. And don't go anywhere, there's still a lot more to talk about on this edition of Broadway Profiles. Coming up, he's one of the fresh new faces of Broadway and one of the young stars of Aaron Sorkin's To Kill a Mockingbird. You'll get to know Nick Robinson. I'm Tamsin Fidel. We'll be right back. Aaron Sorkin's To Kill a Mockingbird took Broadway by storm in 2018. It was still one of the hottest tickets in town right up until the shutdown. Well, as of now, it's coming back to Broadway and it's going on a national tour in 2021-2022. In the Broadway production, Nick Robinson plays Jem Finch and he's this week's Fresh Face. I really have extremely fond memories of growing up in Seattle. I grew up you know, going into the outdoors a lot and kind of being in nature and allowed the freedom to have this big imagination. I found myself drawn towards, I guess, performing relatively early. I ended up doing 
some community theater in Seattle and I, I really, I loved it. My first role was the Monkey King in The Wiz and uh, knocked him dead. It came very naturally to me. I'd already spent a lot of my time sort of, you know, make-believe and pretending and this was just a natural sort of extension of that. I did To Kill a Mockingbird with Bart Shear when I was about 12. And so this is like a very like surreal full circle moment in on so many levels. There's a, a lot to admire I think about Jem. He is a uh, he's a very truthful character. He's got a lot of heart. He's sort of one of the more fiery aspects of the Finch family. He is constantly at odds with his dad, especially in this particular adaptation. But what I think Jem ultimately has is this very strong sense of the world and moral compass and sense of right and wrong, which I admire. And he has the kind of moxie to really stick by his beliefs and, and fight for them and be outspoken. Broadway is has definitely been a bucket list item for me. Having started in theater and kind of coming back to theater, especially in this show with this personal history that I have attached to it is really pretty special. Couldn't have asked for it to work out any better than it, it did and uh, just very happy to be a part of this uh, production. Still ahead, we'll talk about the upcoming new book from Ethan Hawke. I'm Tamsin Fidel and this is Broadway Profiles. For the latest Broadway news and buzz, let's send it over to Broadway.com's editor-in-chief, Paul Wontorek. Hi, Paul. Thanks, Tamsin. Popular Broadway stars have been cracking open their laptops in quarantine, and all their hard work could be heading to your bookshelf. Ali Stroker became the first actress to use a wheelchair for mobility to win a Tony Award in 2019. Now she's penned The Chance to Fly, co-written by Stacey Davidowitz. The middle grade novel, out on April 13th, tells the story of a theater-loving girl determined to defy gravity in a kid's production of Wicked. Also in April, Hamilton star Mandy Gonzalez offers her own middle grade novel. Fearless centers on 12-year-old Monica Garcia, who is starring in a musical take on The Goonies in the very cursed Ethel Merman Theater. Out April 6th, it promises to be the first in a series of Fearless novels. If you're looking for something more adult, stage and screen star Ethan Hawke just released his latest novel, A Bright Ray of Darkness. Set on Broadway, the book centers on a young man navigating the implosion of his failed marriage while starring in Shakespeare's Henry IV. And there might just be some truth in this work of fiction. Hawke himself starred on Broadway in the very same play towards the end of his marriage to Uma Thurman. This Penguin Random House book might be like getting a peek at the popular star's diary. That's it for me. Back to you, Tamsin. Thanks, Paul. We'll be right back. February is, of course, Black History Month. We asked some of our favorite Broadway stars to recognize some of their heroes. Take a look. Hey, y'all. Okay, so the artists I would love to celebrate and give thanks for this Black History Month is Lil Nas X. And I say this because I have been so inspired by an artist who is so young and who has been able to live in his most authentic self, dominating in an industry that is so uncommon for a gay black man to be in. But this young man has just gone after his dream. He's done it and he has not apologized for who he is. The person that I'd like to shout out and celebrate this month is my stage manager, my friend, my president, Cody Renard Richard. He is a prime example of standing in your power. He's a prime example of asking for what you want because if you want something enough, you shall receive it. He is using his voice in ways that I know he didn't even think were imaginable. Um, getting the word out there about black issues and black issues in theater. He's also creating space for young black people, young POC to see themselves. I know that he didn't see himself when he was trying to become a stage manager, so he created that space. And you know, the uh, the small amount of black stage managers that we have in this, this community, he is one of them. The artist that I want to celebrate this Black History Month is actually my friend, Chandra Hall Broomfield. I think he is just so dope. We got to work at Hamilton together. He's a music producer, singer, songwriter, and his ear and his just talent with musicality is just off the charts. The artists that I would like to celebrate this Black History Month are all of the African-American women who have ever graced the stage, film, or television. Hattie McDaniels, 
Cicely Tyson, Whoopi Goldberg, Dr. Tommy Tania Stewart. They made it possible for me to exist in a complete and perfect state, lacking no essential characteristics on the Broadway stage. I stand on their shoulders. And that's going to do it for us. Until next week, I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is Broadway Profiles, presented by Broadway.com. <laughs>